Hey guys, welcome to my art and self-improvement podcast. I'm Katie and I'm a life coach and artist. I'm a life coach for artists. I help artists stop procrastinating on their art, create the art that they've been dying to make and massively improve their mindset so that they can create the life of their art dreams. I struggled with anxiety, depression, self-loathing, and so much self-sabotaging behaviors. And this is my update of how I'm improving my mindset and my life one podcast at a time. Okay, guys, this episode is really good. Seriously, I know I say it every episode, but for real, okay? So take some notes. Listen up. Okay, so I had a breakthrough last week that I'm telling you had me seeing myself a bit more extroverted. Like, what? (laughs) Are you kidding me? The girl who was socially anxious and totally identified as an introvert is starting to see herself more extroverted? Uh, Yeah. So if she can do it, and she totally thought it was impossible, you 100% can experience this as well. Um, And it has a lot to do with what I'll talk about today, which is how to handle criticism. But before I do that, I just wanted to, I just wanted you to know, did you know that I do impromptu Instagram lives now? I'm always, always thinking about my thinking, about how I can uh, help myself and my clients and you guys. And so if I have a revelation, I sometimes just get so inspired to share it and Sometimes I don't really want to wait to make something polished like a YouTube podcast like this. Sometimes I just want to make something really messy, but it's still super valuable. So I'll just randomly go on Instagram and share wisdoms (laughs) in real time. They're super short and sweet, like under 10 minutes, so you can watch them really fast. I save them in my Instagram TV, IGTV. So make sure you're following me on Instagram as well and check out my IGTV, okay? Okay, let's get into today's topic. Let's talk about criticism some more. Yay, I love, love being told what I'm doing wrong. (laughs) So we talked about it last week, but I felt like something was slightly missing from the message um, because, okay, I think it's really, really important, right, that I'm, I'm not saying at all that we shouldn't look for ways to improve, that we should avoid all criticism and be in total denial land. As artists, if we have a goal of improving our art, then feedback and constructive criticism from ourselves or others is probably really useful for that goal, right? But, you know, not every artist has that goal, okay? So let's just make that clear, right? I'm saying, like, if you have a goal to improve your art. So criticism can be a really, really positive force that like pushes us to grow and improve and expand our work, ourselves. But then why is it super debilitating and totally demotivating for some of us? So when when is criticism useful and then when is it hurtful? Does it depend on the type of criticism? Like do we need to avoid criticism about our use of colors versus our anatomy? Or does it depend on who's giving the criticism? So maybe we shouldn't avoid criticism from that annoying friend, but totally accept it from our professors. Or should we avoid it from the really annoying professor, but accept it from the people that love us? Like, what is it? It's none of that. Whether criticism is useful or hurtful totally depends on how we see ourselves not the criticism or the people, right? Not, not, it does not depend on what type of criticism or who gives it to us or what other people think of us, none of it. I know, I know, but I promise that this is really, really great news, especially if you've heard me enough times, right? This is actually really great news. If somewhere in you, you believe you aren't good enough, that you're unworthy, and then when somebody points out that you did something incorrectly, that you did something that maybe isn't the best way to do something, you're going to use that as evidence that you're unworthy and then totally crumble. You're also looking at yourself and your own work through the like not good enough lens 
And that's, again, very demotivating. And so it makes it really hard to keep up the momentum of improvement, right? It's like, it's very, it's like this yo-yo of, of, of creativity. However, if you see yourself as completely worthy, then someone's criticism won't mean anything about your worth. And you'll just take it as feedback to improve in the future or decide that it's not your focus right now, or you'll just disagree, right? From a genuine place. Like, oh, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm gonna have to disagree. And then that's it, no, no drama at all. Okay, but first let's, let's talk about why, why is worthiness so important to us anyway? It's just our prehistoric mind trying to make sure that we don't get kicked out of the tribe, right? Like social death. And it just hasn't caught up to modern times where that we can't really die from that anymore. If we're unworthy two million years ago, that means we don't have any value in the tribe. And so then there's no use for us. We'll get kicked out. And then, and then we really could die back in the day. So in our brains, our primitive brains logic, worthiness equals be staying alive. Therefore, we're, we will do a lot for our worthiness, right? Right? Not realizing that we can really just give it to ourselves this whole time. We keep thinking that that comes outside of us, either in our achievements, in the things we own, um, in, in the way we're acting, right? That's, that's where we think our worthiness comes from. But truly, seriously, believing in your worthiness just as a as as you are right that like worthiness has nothing to do with anything worthiness is just a given right the day that you were born because you were born it makes you totally impervious it's like having a white glow around you it doesn't mean you don't ever feel negative emotion not at all but it means that in your negative emotion you still know that this is normal. This, this still means you're 100% worthy. It doesn't mean anything's gone wrong. It's really absolute freedom. I felt this freedom last week when I, uh, when I was mentioning that extroverted um, breakthrough I had. And it came when, I, and when it really sunk in for me that humans are worthy. Like it's just a birthright. <clears throat> that 100% worthiness is a fact in every single human. I heard a teacher talk about it in just like a, a way that really made sense to me. And I'll, I'll hope to talk about it in the future. But anyway, if anyone has ever experienced social anxiety, you know that thing where you have something you want to say, but then you have a debate <laughs> in your mind, right? Like whether to say it or not. Uh, and then by the end of the night, you've just been having a, a, a debate, like a pol political debate in your mind and you're just mute. When I start to believe that like I'm worthy and everyone is worthy no matter what, that debate in my head has di disappeared by 60%. Because I know that no matter what stupid, dumb, silly, not making sense thing that I say, I'm gonna probably feel embarrassed, but ultimately I'm worthy no matter what. And this has made conversations so much more fun, which has me feeling a teeny bit more extroverted. Like I'm starting to see myself as an extroverted introvert, which is kind of cool. So let's, let's bring this back to handling criticism. So let me illustrate though, like what this really looks like. Let's take an extreme, extreme quote unquote scenario of criticism, which is a rejection letter of some kind, a job, a school, um, yeah, anything, right? If I don't believe in my worth, which by the way, none of us is walking around like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> it's not obvious like that, right? It comes through other thoughts like, I'm never going to be successful. I'm never going to make it. I suck. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm a piece of crap, whatever, right? Anyway, if I don't believe I'm worthy, I will take a rejection letter and it could send me to thinking, right? Like I'll never be successful. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I suck, all that stuff. And it's probably going to prevent us from trying again. And then even before this, when we don't believe in our worth, it prevents us from even trying in the first place. 
we're so afraid, like many of us are so afraid of the possible rejection because we really don't want more evidence that we aren't worthy, that we don't even try, that we, that, that we play so small in our life, right? That it's just too painful because we just don't want to accumulate more evidence. So on the flip side of that, if I believe 100% in my worth and I got a rejection letter, I'll probably feel disappointed that I didn't get the job or whatever opportunity. I could be very devastated if I worked really hard for it. But since I know that my worth is completely intact, I don't make it mean anything about me. And then after a shorter time, I would maybe start asking like, hmm, why? Like I, won- I wonder what was missing in my skill set or in my, in my portfolio, for example, that, that didn't get me the job. And we might read the feedback if we got any or, or we just kind of like deduce, right, and, and do our own kind of investigative work of what, what the feedback could be and then see how we can really apply it. But, you know, when we don't feel worthy, there's no way we can read the feedback. It's just too painful. So we use that information as if we're just solving a puzzle. That's it. And then we try again. And then trying again isn't a problem because... Since we're worthy no matter what, like there's no question on whether we, sh- we should go all in on something that we want, right? Like truly that is like the truth that people who succeed, the people who get to their goals are just the people that went all in and they just kept trying over and over and over again. There, there is literally no secret, you guys. Like that's been like the biggest like help and, and um, relief for me is knowing that like the secret is just to not give up. That's it. Keep trying. Keep, not to not give up, but I think another thing is to know how to learn, right? Like, and that's part of feeling worthiness too, is because um, uh, it's it's about like looking, being able to have an intact view of your own worthiness so that you can look at the feedback without it just like completely making us crumble, So anyway, so people who believe that they are worthy, right, would rather spend their life going after this goal that they really, really desire, even if they never make it, because again, it doesn't mean anything of of their worth if they don't. It just makes no sense not to try since, yeah, the same thing, since their worth is completely intact. If they don't get the job that they wanted, so then they get the job that they didn't want, but it's just a means to still keep going after the job they want, right? It's just like, it's like they just do whatever it it takes, even if it's not the like thing exactly that they want in order to get to the goal that they want. So anyway, it's not about thinking that you're amazing and that you can do no wrong. Worthiness means that you love yourself in all your imperfections. Like you can totally see where you're not amazing and then you're still like, that's okay. I'm working on it. And that, you know, there's something very flawed, but like we are still worthy. It's still okay. So it can look something like this or here. It sounds like something like this. I'm an awesome person, but sometimes I do stupid things and that's okay. I'll learn from it. Or, um, you know, going back to the rejection letter, my skill level is not at the bar this company expects. And that's okay. It doesn't mean I'll never get better or anything about my future. Whereas for me, I, whenever, when I, when I had rejections like that, I would think like, no, it's not my skill level. It's like me, right? Like there's something wrong with me in at my core. Like I'm not good enough at my core, which like, oh my God, that is what causes me to either just, you know, go into a hiatus for a very long time, or I would go into, I would want to just change, right? Because I'm just like thinking like, oh, this is not meant for me. So I'm just going to do something completely different. And so then I don't create that momentum that, that I was talking about. I don't create that compounding effect, you know? Um, sorry, my cat is being, is, is really distracting me right now. Okay. So To break the cycle of this self-criticism and then crumbling, we change how we view ourselves. 
when we criticize ourselves and we look at what we're doing wrong, if we're using that as more evidence that we're unworthy, then that kind of self-criticism or criticism in general is lethal. Lethal. But if we fully believe we're worthy and then, and then all we're doing is using it as completely neutral information, it would, it, that's like, that's like the best thing, right? It's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like criticism could be the best thing in that scenario. So yeah, again, not advocating that we never take it and that we, we don't ever look at where we, we can improve and we only live in rainbow and daisy land. No, I'm advocating that we work on our self-image so that then we can take criticism from a really powerful place. I think this is why self-image, self-love, as cheesy as that sound, but like, like self-worth, all of that kind of stuff, that kind of work, that kind of mindset work really changes everything. It's what makes something that can seem extremely lethal like criticism and turn it into like the best thing that you can, you can have in your life, right? Which is like how you improve. It literally affects everything in our life. So TLDR, the best way I think to handle criticism is to improve our self-image because then the responsibility is all on us. We're not waiting for other people to change or be nicer or to say their criticism in just the right way so it doesn't hurt our feelings. No, it's like it's like we work on our self-image so that we can then like look at what information we need and then the other amazing side effect to that too is that we just get higher confidence levels. We just like ourselves more, you know? Like that's that's it. Um so yes, Awareness is the first step to solving any problem. So if you feel that pang of pain when you're criticized or when you're looking at something that you're not doing right, take a second to really feel it and then find the thought that's creating that feeling, that's creating the painful feeling. And then just, and then first notice, like find it. Notice that it's a thought, that it's not a fact. It's a sentence in your brain that's creating this feeling. And then, and then from there, like find, find where you're feeling like your worthiness is not whole, right? Like what, what thoughts are, are, where are you seeing that your worthiness is not completely 100%? And, and in that awareness, that is when you can then make some changes. But the first step is definitely awareness. We'll talk a lot more about change but actually even just being in such awareness just knowing where the problem is is going to be huge and speaking about knowing where the problem is I do free consult calls that are seriously such a helpful conversation on really really being aware and understanding your problem so if this message resonated with you I would consider doing a call with me if you want to take this even deeper. I mean, seriously, these consults are so incredible. You're like, we're going to spend a dedicated hour where we can really understand yourself and your problem better than you can ever. And then really after that, understanding the steps of what needs to be taken from like where you are right now to where you want to be, right? to solving your problem. I mean, to me, it's like the world's best GPS system. That is what I totally can offer you. And I just absolutely love, love, love doing consults with people and showing them really what their problem is. And it's not what you usually think. A lot of us think our problem is, is like outside of us. But no, <laughs> I, I, I think you know by now that like from my, like what I harp on all the time is that it's always always what's going on inside which again like I said in the beginning of the episode it's the best news ever because that means we can change it right we can't change other people we can't change what's going on in the world all we can do is change ourselves all we can do is control ourselves so so it's the best work ever when we learn how to do that Okay, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope, I hope this was really, really helpful. Uh, yeah, if you're ready to do a console call with me, get in contact with me somehow. I've got the 
calendar in the video description or you can DM me or message me on YouTube or on Instagram or on Facebook, anywhere that you think it would be easy to contact me. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.